Now we're ready to actually start our drawing. We want to make sure that everything we draw is on the centerline layer. So select your centerline layer, right click, and check Make Active to make sure that it's your current layer. Let's start by drawing a line. And again in CAD, it's pretty great because you can just start typing things and it prompts you with all the tools. So if we wanted to just draw a line, we could select our line tool. We could make an orthographic line, an orthogonal line, which means that it's perfectly horizontal or vertical by using our ortho mode. We could type in an exact dimension for this simply by dragging our cursor in the direction that we would like the line to go and typing in five feet, hit enter, hit enter again to finish the line. And we just made a five foot line. Seems easy enough, right? Well, there's actual, actually multiple types of lines. So let's erase this line by hitting E, enter for erase and selecting the line or by selecting the line and hitting your delete key. What we'd like to get in the practice of is primarily using polylines. And polylines, PL, P line, polylines are lines that allow you to have multiple segments that are all connected in one line. There are also a number of options that polylines have that regular lines don't, which is why in general it's best to default to the polyline. So again, I'm going to delete that. From your measured drawings that you made out in the field, you would probably have a sense of the street width and sidewalk width for your site. So I'm going to start with a polyline. It doesn't matter where I start it, somewhere near the origin and I would like to make it the length of my block. I'm going to turn my ortho mode on. I'd like my drawing to be straight. And let's say that my block was 150 feet long. Enter again to end the command. Now your line probably goes way off of the screen. You have a couple of zoom options. You can roll your middle mouse button but you might notice that it stops at some point. You can use the pan command, which you either hit the hand and drag or click and hold the space bar. Hit escape to enter the pan command. You can select your zoom tool, which this is asking us for a window or a scale factor. But sometimes it's best to just zoom all the way out to the extents of your drawing so you can see what's happening. So the command for that is Z for zoom and then E for extents. So that was Z enter, E enter. And now I can see the length, that entire length, 150 feet of my center line. I'd like to offset from this line in order to create my curbs my back of sidewalk, etc. So command offset starts typing or just O. We want to set our distance. So the distance from the center line of the street to the face of the curb, which this will depend on your field measurements, I'm going to assume a distance of 20 feet. I then select my center line, select the side of the line that I want to offset, and let's go ahead and do both sides of the line and then click enter. Pay attention when you're using the command. Look at the command prompt. AutoCAD is asking me, what's the distance? I type my distance. Select object to offset. Select this. Specify the point on the side I'd like to offset. So it's prompting me for how to use the commands. Let's zoom in a little bit. And I would like to now create the curb. So a curb, again with an offset, is usually only six inches. So I type six with the inches sign, or just six. Since our default units are sent to inches, AutoCAD will automatically assume that that's inches. I'd like to change these two new lines to be on the curb layer. So I select the lines, I come over to my properties panel, and under layer, I want to select curb, and you'll notice that it takes the color and the properties of the new layer. 
I would do the same thing for the back of the sidewalk, one more offset. Let's say our sidewalk was six feet wide, probably six feet wide from the face of the curb. And now I've just really started to lay out my street. If you measured an intersection, you might end up with a perpendicular street. So I'm holding down my shift bar, which activates the pan command. I'm going to again type PL for polyline, and then I'm going to make a line that is perpendicular to my original center line. And let's say that this one is 75 feet. Enter, and one more enter to finish the command. Let's say that this street is narrower at only 15 feet. Oops, offset, 15 feet. And then let me change these lines to be on layer curb. I'm going to offset it again to give myself the six inch curb. And again for the six foot sidewalk. You'll notice that it's very uncommon for an intersection to actually have a perfectly sharp corner. So I would like to make a 15 foot radius from this line to this line. And for that, I'm going to use the command fillet. So I'm going to type, start typing F for fillet. Select my first object, but first I'd like to set my radius. So whenever you see a capitalized letter here in the menu, you can hit that letter, R, enter, in order to activate the sub command within the command. And my radius is going to be 15 feet. Now I want to select my first object, so I'm going to select this line, and then this line, and that will give me that radius of 15 feet. I can do the same thing for the inside of the curb. You'll notice here with a 15 foot radius, what should actually be happening is that this should be a radius of 14 foot 6. So what I'm going to do is select this line and delete it by hitting erase. And then your polyline, when you used fillet, your polyline should have joined these lines together into one line. I'm going to then just offset again with a distance of six inches and offset the entire line. And now you'll see that the curb stays parallel all the way across. For the inside curve, it's more common actually that we would have a perfectly square corner. So for this one, let's try fill it again. And this time I want to set my radius to zero. And now you'll see that I went ahead and joined those two lines while also trimming off the excess all in one command and yet I still have a perfectly sharp point. This distance is problematic so let's go back and check our measurements to make sure that that's actually the sidewalk dimensions. In some cities, they might deal with this by actually angling the corner of the building. So the command that we could use for that is chamfer, C-H-A. Let's try angle. So let's specify the length on the first line at six feet. That's how far away from the corner we'll go at an angle of 45. Now let's try selecting our first line and our second line. And now we've just created that angled corner, which makes it so that pedestrians can still flow along the sidewalk. Another thing you might want to start doing is actually identifying the building parcels along the street. So perhaps you know from this edge that it's over 20 feet to the next building. I'm going to use a couple of commands. First of all, I could just measure directly from this line with another line or I could offset this line and use that to help me. But I can't offset right now because that's a polyline and it will not offset properly. So I want to break this into separate line pieces by using the explode command with the keyboard shortcut X. Now you'll notice that my line has been turned back into individual line segments. Now I'll use offset, a distance of 20 feet, 
Perhaps the next building is a double lot at 40 feet. And then perhaps the next building again, a single lot at 20 feet. Now you'll notice that these lines are a bit too short. They're not meeting all the way up to the street edge. So I have a couple of ways that I can change that. You'll notice if you just select the lines and you're not in a command that you get these little grip handles that appear. If I hover over one of them, it can activate the stretch command where I can drag that point around my screen. If I have my ortho mode turned on, I should be able to drag it straight down to the intersection of this perpendicular line. You may notice that it wants to snap to the midpoint. So what I can do is in my object snap menu, it's going off of the screen, but I can right click on my object snap menu and temporarily select perpendicular as one of my options. So that's how you can use the grip edit. I can also use the extend command. I'm going to select my objects, select my object to extend, and you'll see that it automatically extends to that next intersection. One last command I could use would be the stretch command. For stretch, you always have to select with a crossing window, which in AutoCAD means that I create my window from the bottom right corner. If you see a green window, that means that you are selecting with a crossing window. If I start my window from the left side, it is not a crossing window, it's a standard window, which means that it will only select objects that are contained entirely within that window. A green crossing window will select objects that are even just partially included in the window. Stretch command must work with a crossing window and you must select the portion of the object that you want to stretch. I'm going to turn my O snaps back on so I get that end point and then snaps perpendicular. So we used grip stretch, extend command, and regular stretch. Let's say that my line was actually a bit too long and I needed to trim it back to end at this line. In that case, the command is trim. Select my objects. I hit the space bar or right mouse key or enter key when I'm finished selecting. And then I select the portion of the line that I want to get rid of. I would like to put these new lines that I just drew onto a new layer, so I'm quickly going to create a new layer. This time I will call it A Buildings. A, the prefix for architecture. Give it a color. Make sure that these are continuous lines. Now I can select all of the lines that I would like to include in CAD, you don't have to click shift to select multiple. And then I'll go to my properties inspector and change the layer. Let's create one more layer. We'll call it infrastructure, which I know is rather general, but for now, that's what we'll call it. Give it a color. Make sure it's also set to continuous. And let's make this current. Now I'd like to zoom in and start placing things such as manholes or other types of utilities that might be apparent in the sidewalk. You might end up with something like a circle, a circular manhole, so C for circle. The circle, you have a couple of options. I would play around with these. You can make a three-point circle, a two-point circle, or a tangent-tangent radius or you can just spe specify the center point and then type the radius. So if you measured the manhole, you may have determined a radius of approximately, excuse me, I meant to type one foot. I can come to my properties inspector and under radius, I can type one foot and that'll change the size. I could have also used my scale command. Let's move our manhole into the street. You might also come across a utility box or something located in the sidewalk, so let's try the rectangle command. 
rec. All of these commands can be found over here in your toolbar. I just find the keyboard shortcuts to be timeless. It works across platforms, Windows or Mac. It works in Rhino. And as they change the interface and move the tools around, you don't have to go searching for those. So let's specify our first corner. Then start typing a dimension. This gives me my X. If I hit the Tab key, it allows me to move to my Y, and then I hit Enter. Then I can use M for Move, and move that into the location where it belongs. One last thing, let's make an additional layer, joints. This time I actually want to select one of my gray colors, so I'm going to go to the bottom here, select color, and select color 252, and click OK, and make this layer active. Now let's put our first curb line by making a polyline. Let's use the array command. Array will make a series of similar objects. So first select my object. It's a rectangular array as opposed to a polar array which would put things in a circle. Let's set our spacing. So again we'll hit S for spacing. So we want the distance between our columns to be 10 feet and the distance between the rows doesn't really matter because we all only have one row. Up here in this little dialog box Excuse me, let's set our number of rows to 1, and let's start with 10. It looks like we can take a few more. Maybe we only need 14. And hit Enter. Enter again to finish the command. I hope this is enough to get you started on the assignment. We will have another tutorial that helps you to get this out onto paper. I would also play with the copy commands, scale and rota rotate and mirror. There are also commands that will help you move things around the screen and please just read the command prompt and you should be able to figure out how they work.